Hi, so a friend of mine sent me this actually. He sent me an email about a foam that MIT had made that they were using for uh, making steam and water desalination, and I thought it was absolutely awesome. So I thought I'd give it a go replicating it. Now, MIT reported this hydro hydrophilic foam uh, covered in exfoliated graphite, and I thought, well, we know how to make exfoliated graphite really easily and of course we've been carbonizing things for ages so how about carbonizing a foam covering it with graphene and see if we can get the same result now the foam i chose was this stuff because it's already extremely hydrophilic it soaks up an enormous amount of water so it struck me that the um the uh, structure, there we go, the structure of this would be ideal if we could carbonize it, maintain the structure, then we'd get something that would wick water, as long as we made that carbon hydrophilic instead of hydrophobic, it would wick water through the uh, maintained structure, so Oasis would be ideal. Uh, it's really, really cheap, Oasis. I think I bought 20 of these for about uh, five pounds or something. It's, it's extremely cheap and it cuts beautifully easily. Now when you are carbonizing this it loses a huge amount of its volume. Uh, so if you try to carbonize the whole block then it's not going to work. So I cut off a centimeter and this is one centimeter and that's how much you lose in the carbonization process through shrink shrinkage. And it began as a centimeter and it's now 0.8 centimeters. And I carbonized that to get me a block of carbonized oasis foam. Now I'm going to do a separate video on exactly how I did this carbonization and exactly how I made the foam um, hydrophilic from hydrophobic but that's I'm afraid going to be on the members channel so members have a look on that channel and you'll see exactly how to do this. Once we've made that foam it turns out the rest is an absolute piece of cake. Now obviously um, we did a separate video on this and that was arc exfoliation of uh, graphite into exfoliated graphene. Um, we made this stuff. It's extremely light because it's exfoliated graphite. Now I did the whole video on that so by all means have a look at that. What we basically do is acid wash it clean it, stick it on a metal plate and point an arc welder at it. Awesome video, I loved it. It makes these worms. These worms are hydrophilic in themselves and that's what you're looking for. Because all you actually do with this now is put that on top of there. <laughs> what I'm laughing at is how stupidly easy this is. Put that on top of there, flatten it down a little bit so it adheres. You don't want to really crush it, but you do want to flatten it a bit so it adheres to the foam. There we go. And we get a two layer structure where we've got our carbon foam here and our slightly crushed uh, exfoliated graphite on the top. And that's it. Now all we have to do is pop this in water because the water will wick up through there and into that surface. And if we point the sun at it, then the sun will heat the exfoliated graphite and boil the water. Now it's not trying to boil the whole mass of water, it's only trying to boil the stuff on the surface, and of course the graphite is extremely good at infrared absorption, so it gets really, really hot, and that will steam off. Now, of course, the, we're living in England, and it's March, there isn't that much sun, so what I'm going to do is put it underneath an infrared lamp. But if you're in a sunny country or in the summer, then this will work just by putting it outside, probably under a lens, but probably it would be fine just under a hot day with uh, just the sun directly on it. Uh, MIT certainly say it is. Uh, and we have reproduced what they did there exactly. All we've got is a hydrophobic sponge that wicks up the water into the exfoliated graphene layer, uh, sorry, exfoliated graphite layer. Graphite layer gets hot, we get steam. But I'm going to say do, do a setup where we've got a little tub of water. I'm going to float that in the tub of water, put it under an infrared lamp, and see what happens. So let's go and do that. So here's the experimental setup on the bench, and you can see I've got two trays of water. Uh, there's a Fresnel lens just above it, focusing the IR lamp onto the um, block that we just made. And you can see it steaming, if I can anyway, no worries at all. But I'll give you a close-up view of that in a minute. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so that's five minutes under that lamp and that is cooking away. That's, I just think that's awesome. You can see the steam coming off. You can see the heat coming off. That is just fantastic.
<laughs> so, there we go. Wasn't that awesome? I mean, really, really awesome. That was just so incredibly easy to do. And you can see a whole load of uses for it. I mean, we're making steam. So if we condense that steam, obviously we're going to get pure water. So it's going to be brilliant at desalinating. So we can put that and desalinate water really, really easily and quickly. And that's awesome. Now, it's a bit puny, this little thing here under that little lamp, because the lamp really doesn't give that much energy. You think it does, but it doesn't. Nowhere near the what would do under the sun. Under the sun, we should be able to produce volumes upon volumes of steam. And we can use that steam to drive an engine with it. So you could actually create power just using that steam to drive a steam engine. And I think that's what MIT did. So I hope that was of interest. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you want to see how to make the foam, please do go to the members channel. Thank you very much.